Okay, so today I'm going to demonstrate how to use EFT, emotional freedom techniques, to overcome overtrading, trading addiction, and fear of missing out when it comes to trading. Many times when we're trading, you will see that if you wanted to eliminate a lot of the losses in the bottom line, many of them can just be eliminated by being able to not enter a trade when you know that it's not time to enter a trade, but somehow you keep making up a reason to enter a trade, and that can be based on a number of different things, but it has to do with some level of anxiety. That's what fear of missing out is about, lack and anxiety is a core belief. We believe that there is lack in the world and that we need to do something. We need to get into a trade, but you actually know that there isn't a trade. Once we actually learn the fact that trades only occur at certain times of the day and almost always with news, then you'll see that before, for sure, everybody is just looking at the market and there can be a trade at any time. But once you've actually learned how markets work, you'll see there won't be a trade except at certain times. That helps right there, but still, sometimes you know there's not going to be a trade or you think it's, it's just not likely. And then you make up some reason why you think that there's a trade. So in order to get the best results from this, you want to do two other things along with this. And one is that you want to do an eliciting of your core belief. I've got another video about how to, how to do the process of eliciting a core belief. So what you would do is you would just notice I have this issue with trading and I have this personal bias that I want there to be a trade or I'm making up a reason there to be a trade, so I would ask myself, what's true about that? And then continue to do this eliciting process. You do get into a deep, relaxed state and spend some time asking yourself, what is it that's true that's causing that at a core level? And you should practice it several times, like one time it may kind of take you in one direction, another time in another direction. Keep doing it until you feel sure you know this is the real reason why I do that, then you can program in the new belief using the how to reprogram the subconscious mind. And the other thing that you need to do along with this is uh, when this issue comes up, consider that you might need to do a parts integration. And the parts integration, we'll make another video about how to do parts integration. And parts integration is the most effective way to cause a personal transformation using what I believe is the deepest levels of Jungian shadow work, but instead of shadow integration, we call it parts integration, and it's simplified, and it's easier to just focus on getting the results right away. And then, whereas some Jungian psychologists will overcomplicate things and make it a bit more academic. So those two things, eliciting the core belief and then programming in the opposite belief and doing parts integration are the things that will go along with using EFT to overcome any issue that you have in trading. This issue we're going to do today is about overtrading, fear of missing out, and trading addiction. Okay, so here's how you actually do the process of using EFT to overcome this issue. So the way that you begin practicing EFT Funny thing, if you have ever done the original Gary Craig training and how to do EFT, the first thing that he says is you put your hand and begin rubbing the sore spot while saying the setup phrase. Well, at some point, somebody decided to change it. It may have been Gary Craig himself, out of whatever reason, but it seems like there's a tendency for people who practice EFT to be a bit lazy about some things or to change things that aren't necessary. But if, now they'll say, you know, you tap on the karate chop point, but that's not the same. So practice this technique. And so the way to do this is you want to locate the sore spot on your chest. So you touch your collarbone and then touch your nipple, place your hand in between those two points allowing it to move over three inches or so, so your fingers are right around here, and then press around and search for uh, a sensitive spot, and just 
move your hand around in a, a clockwise circular motion around that area on what's known as the, the sore spot. Just like with everything in any kind of EFT or energy psychology practice, if you do do any practice on one side of your body, these are things that I have never understood why EFT practitioners will tap on one side of their body as if if they tapped on the other side, it's going to take too long or something. They'll do it over and over and over. Maybe they don't think that if they did both sides, they'd be getting more results. I don't get that, but with anything, you want to do both sides simultaneously if you can. So rub these two points, and this is how you do EFT. Even though I feel this anxiety, nervousness, it causes me to make a decision to get into a trade when I may know that there's not really a trade. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I have this fear of missing out, which is anxiety caused by a belief, a core belief in lack, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Even though I may have some inner conflict in which part of me knows that I shouldn't enter a trade and another part decides I may need to enter a trade at a certain time when there really isn't one, I deeply and completely love and accept myself. I like to say it in the second person as if I'm saying it to another person who is my inner child. Even though I have this, I deeply and completely love and accept you, my child. You can do it in both the first and the second person, but it really helps. If you imagine that there is another part of you, an inner child, and you're saying it to that inner child, giving reassurance, it's okay, I love and accept you. Then you begin the process of tapping. So I'm going to tap on the eyebrow point and then tap on the side of the eye. And of course, I'm going to tap on both sides. And almost nobody taps on both sides that I see. But Jennifer Partridge will tap on both sides with, with both hands. But I like to just tap with the right hand because I don't get the same precision and um, force that I get trying to use my left hand, which you know, it's not my dominant hand, so I want to use my right hand and do it on both sides. Under the nose, you know, you're under the eye, under the nose, the chin area, the collarbone. And as you do this, you this anxiety, this nervousness causes me to get into a trade. No, it's not right. Not having the ability to wait. Not having the level of patience I need. Tapping on the under the arm. There's another spot. It's below the na the it's below the nipples. This is another spot, but somebody decided to just leave it out and maybe it was decided it's not appropriate for women and not uh, not comfortable for women to tap here. But, you know, if you're a woman, you may have to lift up your breast and tap under your breast. And maybe just do it if you're alone. But if you're a man, there's no reason to not tap here because that's one of the points. Then... You go to the top of the head and tap on the top of the head. Why do people tap on the top of the head the second time through? But the first time through, they start with the eyebrow point. I don't know. You'll see that I tap on the back of my head, which isn't a EFT point, but it's done in Qigong and Kung Fu for a different reason. And this is called beating the jade pillow.
great Qigong masters and Kung Fu masters have a practice you'll see where they're thumping the back of their head. And the reason for doing it, I may not be totally sure why they do it, but I see, okay, they're doing that. And what I gather is they're doing it to activate the pineal gland. And the pineal gland is the very center of your energetic body. So when you tap on this, you're activating the pineal gland. So couldn't that assist in the intention that you have of transformation by tapping on the back of the head? So then you go through and do it all again, just quickly tapping, you can say things, say this, I keep entering trades and there's not a trade. I have this trading addiction, this trading addiction. So that I don't waste any time, I just go right on you know, with, with both hands going to another spot. That's why sometimes when I'm tapping on my under under the arm, I will begin tapping on the back of my head at the same time. Then the top of the head, the eyebrow, side of the eye, the other eyebrow, the other side of the eye, below the eye, below the other eye, below the nose. Chin area, collarbone. In addition to that, there's another area that I like to tap that isn't an EFT practice, and it's taking the back of your hands and tapping all over the lower back area. Now, this isn't EFT, it's also another Qigong practice, and all Qigong masters practice this all the time. Eventually I figured out that they do this because fear and anxiety are stored in the kidneys, just like we know that anger is stored in the liver, and fear and anxiety in general is stored in the lower back kidney area. It's, it's the water element, and when you tap on that area, you can see, you can feel, it's releasing stagnant energy or stagnant emotions of anxiety and fear. Notice what happens when you tap on your lower back area. It's releasing stagnant anxiety and fear, which you then can allow to go down into the earth. Allow it to go deep into the earth. And as some Qigong masters like Matakshia will say, give a command, stay there. You will be at home down there. Just go down there and be recycled. So you give it a command, don't come back. Now, when you tap on yourself, allow it to flow down into the earth. And then, in addition to these practices, when you do EFT, you can greatly enhance this practice through bilateral brain stimulation. Your bilateral brain stimulation is taught in EMDR, and to experience that, you need to get a licensed EMDR therapist to do EMDR with you, and in some cases, they will teach you how to do it yourself. There are even courses in how to do self EMDR and books on how to do self EMDR, but in Qigong, Qigong masters have been doing bilateral brain stimulation for centuries in all the different practices of Wudong Qigong. And one of the best practices that you can do to instantly get full effect of whole brain activation, bilateral brain stimulation, is this practice where I'm going to swing my arm and and hit the shoulder with one arm and hit the lower back with the other arm. So you become like a rag doll and then begin swinging the arms like this. Now notice, if I do this practice like this, I'm getting one level of effect. But if I do it like this, or I'm also including the eye movements, looking over one shoulder, looking over the other shoulder, 
then I'm getting an even deeper and even more powerful effectiveness. So do the right uh, And then you can go back through and tap on all the points again. Maybe quickly if you want. You want to include tapping on the finger points. Why would people leave this out? It's an original part of TFT taught by Roger Callahan, and it's part of EFT taught by Gary Craig. But most people are just going to leave it out. I don't know why. And you want to tap on each finger. And another thing like, oh, don't tap on this one. Because that point is activated when you tap on the nine gamut point. And it's like, why would you not want to just tap on each finger on both hands? Why would you want to do it on just one hand? So you tap on all the fingers. And then go back through and tap on all the points again. And you can be saying these things, you know, this, 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 uh, not waiting, not having patience, this anxiety, whatever it is, you can define what it is that you're trying to release and just do it while, uh, say that while you're tapping. And then there's a technique that, oh, what, what's the, the famous, uh, one of the early EFT innovators, contemporary, all the way back to, Gary Craig, this is a lady named Patricia, I think, I forget her name, but you know, she teaches you, after you're going through saying the negative reasons that you want to get rid of, you can begin saying the positive things that you want to, uh, oh, I can allow my higher self to make wise decisions for me. I can relax and be calm. I can decide for myself if it's the right time to enter a trade and not be confused and just keep on saying the positive things that you're, you're wanting to develop in yourself. First you say the negative things about the anxiety, the fear, the, the inability to commit to your decisions, not having patience, and then gradually begin saying the positive things that you want to employ, tapping on all, all the points and do all the fingers, do the back of your head, do the top of your head, do the lower back here. And then do some bilateral brain stimulation. Now, by the time you do this, and I forgot to mention you, when you start the process, you you rate yourself on a scale of zero to ten. Like if I thought uh, I have about a seven level uh, with this affecting me, and then I do this process and rate again, and notice, wow, now I only have like a three. Uh, this is only bothering me up to about a level three. Then I can do it a few more times and get it down to a zero. And if I want to really get it to be permanently zero all the time, complete master of trading, never entering at the wrong time. I mean, you can still enter at the wrong time and accept that as part of trading. So as much as necessary, just feel free to repeat the whole process and then move forward in your life and see is it completely gone or do you need to repeat it a few times and maybe you need to repeat it every time you trade definitely you'll see the results over time are causing the whole issue of what's causing that stress in your nervous system what's causing inside of your body this inner conflict the disruption in your energy flow that affects your trading will be subdued and you'll be able to make decisions without having any strong anxiety fear, any of those things is causing you to make the wrong decisions in trade. So let's all try it out and then let's see what the result is in the future. Let me know how this works for you and I'll see you the next time.